Hey, what's up, everybody? I'd like to welcome you to another Juice tutorial. And today what we're going to talk about is a way that we can interpolate values a little bit slower in our gain slider so we don't get any sort of artifacting when we're trying to jump from one value to another really quickly. So I've had a couple of subscribers that have made comments on on, on the uh, on some of the other videos that have said that when they try to jump from one value to another value really quickly, that they're getting some art artifacting in their gain slider. And uh, there is a way to remove it, and it's roughly based on the Juice tutorial uh, where they discuss uh, how to set and recall uh, parameters using the audio processor value state, tree state. And it's part of that tutorial. Ours is a little bit differently, it is a little bit different because we've built our gain slider just a little bit differently. So I just thought I'd take a second to go through that with you guys. So first thing that we need to do is we need to be able to store the value of the gain slider at one particular point in time. Okay, so we're going to create a float called previous gain. And what we could do is we can initialize and store this when we're in our prepare to play method. So as I've said in past tutorials, this prepare to play just gives us, uh, just initializes any sort of variables that we need before we're getting ready to do any sort of playing or, or feeding through, feeding audio through our plugin. So what we could do is we could just say uh, previous gain, not spelling right today equals. Now, I've done some experimenting on this, and what I found was that if, that if I used the value that I got from the slider, that what happens is so so we have this so we have this method va slider value changed in which we're able to push the value of our slider into this uh, variable that we that we made in the processor called gain value. And unfortunately, what happens is that because the, uh, is, is that this plugin editor doesn't really initialize until we actually open the GUI in our host. So what was happening when, uh, when I was experimenting with this was that I was, was that I would open the project and the values would show correctly but the value wasn't actually playing at the correct level until I opened the GUI. As soon as I would open the GUI, then the, va then the volume would change to the correct value. And that's because the processor is kind of a parent of the plugin editor. And so we need to make, so we need to push that value into the processor in order for it to reflect, in, in order for it to reflect properly. So the way that we're going to do that is we're going to actually gain, we're, we're we're going to actually use our value that we're going to get from, let me go back to the processor, from this create and add parameter. We have this, we have this variable, this normalizable range called gain range, and it's between minus 48 and zero. So what's happening is that our slider is controlling that gain range but we need to get we need to read the value from from the game range that's here in our processor um, in our in, in our processor uh, CPP in order to in order for it to reflect properly before we open the UI that opens up the plugin editor. And the way that we do that is by saying so what we're going to do is we're going to take and we're going to modify this code. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to comment all of this out. And so before we have we had our transfer function that we were using to get our logarithmic value for our gain. And I'm going to use that and I'm going to transfer that up here to the constructor. So I'm going to say previous gain equals the pal function and it's 10. And instead of using the instead of using the gain value variable that I was using to get from, I was getting that number from the slide, from the slider value, I'm gonna instead dereference the value that is coming from this, uh, from this gain ID that I have in the parameters, okay? 
So what I can say here is I can say the reference parameters dot get raw parameter value. Okay. Then it's asking for the parameter ID. And here I can just use the ID for the for the parameter that I'm looking to, to go by, which is gain ID right here. Okay, so that's how I'm making that connection between the parameter and then I'm dereferencing the value. So I'm getting I'm, I'm going to the wrong place here. So I'm so I'm dereferencing that value using uh, using this star. And then as you recall, as I hope you recall, it's that value divided by 20, which gives us our, our final value, which is between zero and one. And then that's the value that we will be pushing into our buffer. So, so we have the previous, so when we're doing prepare to play, we're storing the first value that we have. So what we can say so what we can what we can do at this point is we can go down to our process block. We're going to actually do this a little bit differently. There's a way in Juice that we can do this without having to um, go through um, a nested for loop in order to apply this gain. And I've just found this out recently. Okay, and that's using. Let me pull up the API to show you guys. So if we get a Juice tutorial, uh, not tutorials classes then if I go into buffer <clears throat> audio buffer audio buffer sorry sorry guys buffer audio buffer so if I just do apply gain so so we can use a gain multiplier um, and, and apply that to our whole buffer just using this function apply gain rather than needing to go through this nested for loop. Okay, so uh, the way that we can do this is we can say buffer buffer dot apply gain. Okay, but first thing that we need to do so we stored so we stored our previous value, which is our initial value for when we first open our plugin. Now what we need to do is we need to go into our processor block and we need to create another variable called current gain. Okay. And that's going to be the same thing as our previous gain. Okay. So what we're, what we're doing is we're looking to make a comparison between the gain that it was before and the gain that it is now, and if it's the, and if those and and if those numbers are the same, then we just keep the gain the same. But if it's not, then we need to do something else, and I'll show you what we're going to do. Okay. So as I said before, we can use an if statement here. So we have if current gain equals the previous gain. So if those two numbers are the same. Then we can just say, we can just use that function buffer dot apply gain. Okay, and then we can we can just say current gain. Okay, just need a double equals here. Okay. Now here's where it gets a little bit more confusing, but not much more. So we can do. You can we can use this other function, okay, which is apply gain ramp, where what we do is we basically say we're going to use this uh, we're going to use this one here, apply gain ramp. So we have a start sample which is zero, which is the sample that we start at, the number of samples which is going to be the number of samples in our buffer, and then we go from our previous value to our current value. So what that's saying is that in this gain ramp, what we're going to do is in um, in the number of samples that we have in our buffer. For me, it's five. It's five hundred twelve. 
uh, of a 512 sample buffer. So it's saying instead of trying to instantly go from the one value to the other value, we can do that. We, we have now 512 samples that we can get from that previous value to the new value, which, which will eliminate that clicking artifact that you get. Okay, hopefully. So, so we can just do apply gain ramp. And as I said, start sample is zero. And then we're, we're going to get from that value to whatever value that we want to get to in, um, in the, the buffer, the number of samples in our buffer. And we're going from our previous gain to our current gain. Okay. Then at the end of it, we just have to take and store the store the current gain value back in the previous gain. So then we just say previous gain equals current gain. And what that'll do is that'll store that value. So if we want to change again, then it will go from whatever that new value is to the one that we want to go to. And it has 512 samples to do that in. So that's a little bit, um, oh, I should put it, I should put it down below this, uh, buffer clear dot clear. Okay. So here we are. We can just get rid of all this. Okay, save it, and I think, I think that's everything. Okay, so let's just try it out, see what happens. Okay, build succeeded, so far so good. And just opening Ableton now, just to test it. While it's doing that, I'm gonna make myself useful, erase some of this blank space. Okay, Ableton's open. Okay, I'm just gonna open up a project here. Okay, so when I when I click on this, it should be fine. Okay, cool. So that so that's playing fine. So now when I change the value of this should change okay. Now I'm just going to save it and reopen it just to make sure that it saves and plays at the correct value. And it does. Okay. And I can go I'm going to go quickly between different values see if see if I can pick up any sort of artifacting. I wasn't getting artifacting on it before. I don't know if that might be a, an issue with certain operating systems. I'm on a Mac, um, but I wasn't getting any artifacting with it before. It seemed to be working fine for me, but this is helpful for um, other people that might be having some artifacting on there. So, so, so let's just try. Great, I'm not getting any artifacting there. So that should that should be working fine, okay? And just to go through one final explanation of what we did there. So we created, we created a float called previous gain where we're able to store the initial, the initial, uh, the initial number, the initial gain value that we have when we first open the plugin. Okay, then we use, we store that in our prepare to play method. Okay, and then we use our transfer function, which was that logarithmic function we went through a few tutorials ago. And then I used, I dereferenced the pointer from the create and add parameter method here that I used to get what the raw value was at that point. Okay, so as you can see, the raw value is that is that uh, value between negative 48 and zero. In my process block, I created another variable called current gain, and I set it equal to the same thing. 
then what we did was we used an if statement to compare what the current what the current gain is and what the previous gain is. And if those are the same, then we just keep everything the same. But if it's different, then what we do is we're able to use a gain ramp to interpolate from the previous gain to what the current gain value is in whatever our buffer, uh, what, whatever our, 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 our number of samples in our buffer is, which is for me, 512. And then finally after that, you take the current gain and then you store it back in as the new previous gain value. So I hope that was helpful for you. If you have any questions or anything, just leave me a comment below and I'll see you next time.